Hello, welcome to this new video tutorial series in which we're going to have a look at Spectrosonic's Omnisphere and a, a mighty monstrous synthesizer of truly awesome power and a little bit deceptive because when you look at it, it looks kind of straightforward and a little bit simple. But there is depth here and there are many, many different rabbit holes we can jump down. Today, we're just going to have an overview of the architecture of the thing, because one of the problems that I found when I first started using Omnisphere was that it was actually quite difficult to get to grips with where the sound was coming from. So today we're just going to have a look at an overview of the entire instrument. And the first thing to really mention is that it's actually eight synthesizers in one. We've got this thing, this concept called the multi, and this sits right at the top of the tree. There's nothing beyond the concept of the multi. And this is where eight completely independent synthesizers in their own right with full editing functionality can be mixed together. And this that we're looking at here is the mixing panel by which that process is accomplished. So if we have a look over on the left hand side, we can see the multi browser and I can click any one of these presets to load it. It's going to give me a little warning message. And then we get a little bit of a preview of what the sound's going to be. Now, I don't particularly want to get too deep into all of the functionality of the synth in one go. It's just too big. But I will very briefly jump into the browser page to show you this play symbol down here. This is called autoplay. And this is the feature, and this is applicable to all browsers uh, in Omnisphere. If you see this little play symbol and you've got it turned on, whenever we load a sound, we're going to hear that sound. That's where it's coming from. Okay, so let's have a look at this multi. We've got three different synthesizers in this sound. Our first synth, I'll just solo it, Astral Visions 1, gives us the otherworldly kind of thing. Synthesizer number two is more of a kind of choir affair. And synthesizer three, as it describes, is a music box. And when we add all of those together, just play, pressing a single note here, just pressing an F, and that's what we get. Now, I think it's a little bit difficult to try to deconstruct an instrument when it's doing so many different things. That's just overwhelming for me. So if I'm trying to get to grips with how this thing works, I don't want all of that complexity. It's fantastic to know it's there and we're going to get to it eventually. But for the time being, and for quite a good while, we're actually going to throw away the concept of the multi entirely. We're not going to think about it again. Everything for a good while to come is going to be dealing with a single one of those eight synthesizers. Now in Omnisphere they're called parts. So we have eight parts that go to make up a multi. And the boxes across the top of the screen allow us to choose each of those parts. So by clicking on this number one, I've now selected part number one. And in fact, because the other parts are still there, if we have a look at part number two, there's vaporware tension. I'm actually gonna throw that entire multi away. The easiest way to do that is from this little multi uh, utility window here. And I can say initialize multi. It'll ask for a confirmation and then throw all of the presets in the entire instrument away and get us back to a really simple default sawtooth sound based on part number one. None of the other parts are gonna make any noise at all now, just part number one. So let's have a listen to that really simple sawtooth. There it is. Now that sound is contained in part number one, but it's actually called a patch. It's, it doesn't have a name. Its patch name is default, but this is a patch that lives inside a part. So let's have a think about those two terms for a moment. Part is the container in which the sound lives. Patch is the sound itself. So we load a patch into a part. And in fact, as soon as we selected part number one, what did initially say multi-browser over here when we we're looking at the multi, now says patch browser, because we're going to load a patch into the part. 
and our options in the little browser down here have changed. We can no longer see multis. Now we're looking at individual patches. So let's load one. I'm going to load this sound. And the reason why I've selected this sound will become obvious shortly. The first thing to note is that it's been loaded into the interface now and we can see the JP Heaven Trance preset. And by default, it takes us to the main page where some really basic stuff like our level and the ability to mute it and solo it, really, really simple stuff. We will deal with all of this later. I'm just having a, a really quick fly through the synth at the moment. This is what we see. But to the right of the main page is what we uh, wanna look at next because these things here labeled A, B, C, and D are called layers and this is the lowest level of synthesizer block in Omnisphere. So we have four layers that go together to make a patch. All of that lives inside a part. And then we can have eight parts that live in a multi. If you prefer to work with pictures rather than words, there it is. This uh, page is from the manual and that's a visual representation of what, I, what I've just described. So what we're now going to do is to have a look at these layers, try to figure out what they're all about. Well, as I say, we've got four of them, but this particular patch only uses two. And we can see that these little blue lights underneath the layer symbol, the layer letter, tell us that it's using two layers. Layer A, which is currently selected and therefore what we see down here, is a synthesizer layer. So what that means is that every layer in Omnisphere can be one of two different types. It can either be a synth layer or a sample layer. And that distinction determines whether or not the sound from the oscillator that lives right down at the heart of that layer comes from a digital signal processing unit. In other words, it's dynamically created. Os Omnisphere builds this wave dynamically. Or it plays a sample. Now layer B is sample based. That's why I chose this sound because it's a good example of a patch that uses both a synth layer and a sample layer. So let's have a listen to those two sounds and see what each of them bring into the party. Firstly, I'm going to mute the synth layer because we're looking at this one at the moment. So let's have a listen to the, the sample, this JP8000 sample. Sounds like that. Over on layer A, however, we have uh, this JP8000 saw fat wave. And you can see that this is the, the wave shape of the thing that's gonna get generated. Now, before we go any further, let's just have a listen to it. It doesn't have anywhere near the brash harshness of layer B. And then those two things merge together. Sounds like that. So JP8000, layer B is really the dominant partner in this, um, in this setup. But nevertheless, you know, this is certainly bringing something to the sound. Now we're going to spend quite a number of videos breaking down the layer oscillators and figuring out exactly how these things work. But for the purpose of this overview, the synth oscillators are based on a thing called a wavetable. What that means is that rather than just being capable of generating this wave and only this wave, each synth based oscillator is capable of generating multiple different types of wave and we access them via this shape slider. Now this particular preset has a two wave wavetable. So there are two waves inside this wavetable. That's wave number one, that's wave number two. But as we'll see in later videos, we can have wavetables that contain multiple waves and the ability to morph between them as we go. So let's just listen to this on its own to hear what it sounds like when we move from one wave to another. And in fact, if I just disable the filter for a moment, I'll try to catch the, the shape of this thing in the oscilloscope. 
So that's not a bad approximation. These pictures are actual real world representations of the wave that's going to get generated. So let's just have a recap at that point and think about what we're talking about here. We've basically got each one of these layers is a completely independent synthesizer in its own right. At its core, it's got an oscillator that's capable of either generating a DSP wave, the digital signal processing wave, or a sample based wave from a vast array of different sound sources that Omnisphere is capable of supplying to us. So Omnisphere uses this kind of fancy term sound source. It's basically a collection of one or more samples that are clustered together and presented to us as a single usable oscillator. So in our JP8000 um, example, for instance, we're using the JP8000 SuperSaw sound source. That's the, that's the magic word. And here are all the sound sources we've got. When I say it's vast, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Okay, so far so good. So we've now got the concept of the layer, which is the smallest block of synthesizer module that Omnisphere has to offer. We collect four of those together. That makes a patch. The patch lives inside the part. Uh, then we've got effects to consider. So every single patch has its own FX bank. And you can see that we've got multiple slots inside the patch. We're going to deal with the effects units uh, comprehensively as well. I think there are 58 different effects units available to us. So I've just thrown a delay onto the sound and now it's going to bounce away merrily to itself. Coming out of the effects bank, we also have an arpeggiator. Turn the arpeggiator on. So there's the arpeggiator and the delay kind of bouncing off each other. That was kind of, kind of nice. So uh, an independent arpeggiator, again, for every single patch. We could have multiple arpeggiators playing with each one of these eight patches that we have access, access to inside the multi. Let's turn the arpeggiator back off. And the last thing that we want to look at, because we've talked about every one of these buttons, so it feels a bit mean not to talk about the orb, let's talk about this. This is a proprietary spectrosonics thing. They've basically handpicked or curated various elements out of each sound and said, how about if you kind of morph dynamically between these four different settings, you know, do you think that's going to be fun? Every time we roll the dice, we get a different set of parameters that Omnisphere chooses to present to us. And we can pick up this little target symbol and morph between these different points of the compass. Now, depending on the complexity of your sound, each time you roll these dice, you can get spectacularly different results. This is quite a simple sound, so I don't expect it to be like really dramatic. That's different. So in addition to all of that morphing flexibility, you can actually record paths that the orb travels in and save them as kind of preset um, sound sculptures, if you like. So really fascinating module. We'll deal with all of that in due course. So that was a really quick tour of the instrument because it's capable of generating so many sounds simultaneously. I think if you had four layers in every one of those eight parts, that's potentially 32 different oscillators all firing away at the same time. So it can be absolutely overwhelming. The easiest way to pick apart something that seems overwhelming is to keep going until you've got one thing, just one thing to talk about. And then once you understand that, build, build your way back up again. And so that's what we're going to do in this video series. For the next few videos, we're just going to concentrate on the oscillator and really try to understand how the oscillator in this thing works. And then once we've got that basic building block, we'll be able to stick other modules on and eventually get to the, st to the stage where we can understand the kinds of sounds that came out of that multi that we, that we were looking at a few minutes ago with all of these unbelievable kind of interactions between all the sounds. 
So if that sounds interesting to you, maybe you bought this thing and you're a little bit intimidated by it or you're just wondering what all the fuss is about, please uh, consider subscribing, hit notifications. You'll be sure not to miss any of the episodes. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.